Hey guys, thank you for joining us. We are joined by John Bullard of Chicago Land Championship Wrestling. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing today? Uh, we are great, man. Thank you for joining us. You know, like Callum said before we started recording, we're massive fans of the company and we're massive fans of Chicago in general. So it's uh, it's great to have you, man. Hey, you know, it's still hearing uh, from fans from across the pond, you know, that they're fans of what we're doing. It's It's like the most humbling feeling. In the yeah. world, you know, we usually like having local fans say that, but when you like, we've had uh, fans from Japan and a few other places really message us and are like, "We love your studio wrestling," and I'm like, "Thanks, man." <laughs> you know, it's like it is humbled by it. You know, I'm like, really, studio um, wrestling is awesome, though. Like, I'm, I'm sure it's one of the inspirations behind what you're doing, but uh, studio wrestling has such a different feel to arena wrestling. Oh, uh, like, I mean, what what was it? Was it that reason that uh, you wanted to go with studio wrestling in the first place? Well, give you guys a little background. Uh, when I had my first big break in the world of professional wrestling, um, I was a television play-by-play -play man uh, for a company called Southern Championship Wrestling, which was a studio wrestling program. Yeah. So literally grinded my teeth on, on studio wrestling, uh, learned the importance of booking um, a show laying out a proper format, but most importantly, uh, what I love about studio wrestling is the intimate feel that mm -hmm. fans get compared to an arena show. Mm -hmm. You know, studio wrestling isn't meant for 5,000 people. It's, you know, you have this one section or two sections and the fans are real close up to the ring they're, they're right near the action. And it's just, there's no, there's, there's no other atmosphere like it. Yeah. I completely agree. Uh, it, I've never had the chance to really be part of a, a studio crowd before because I know you can say like independent shows are the closest you'll get where there's like a limited crowd, but it's not produced the same. It's a studio wrestling's produced for TV, and it, you can yes. very much tell it's produced for TV. It's I, I'd love to be able to go to a studio show at some point. Next time we're in Chicago, you, you best believe yes. we're coming to see you guys. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, we're, we're actually working with um, Wrestling uh, Travel. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. helping a lot, of, a lot of fans to travel. As one of the packages we're going to do with them is for UK fans and fans from you know, other European countries, you know, they want to come to our, our studio show. We'll put together a studio package where we kind of give them like a little tour of Chicago, awesome. but also have them come to like the studio and sit down and you know, meet their stars and have a little, like, you know, special greetings, you know, and yeah, yeah stuff like that I love doing, man. Because to me, if a fan is traveling that far away to see a show, you should do something a little special, extra for them, like, hey, you came out this far to see us, let's do something in return for you. Hey, you know? dude, we, we don't, we would have a, we'd come to Chicago anyway, we came once for All In, and we fell in love with the place. It was the absolute best experience, so... If we got to come and see Chicago Land Wrestling too, that would just make it even better. Yeah, uh, please do. Please, so anytime you're guys here, and, and if we don't have a show going on, just hit me up and be like, hey, we're going to be in Chicago. We'll go hang out and go you get a You can be our tour guide, guide, man. You yeah. can show us all the good places. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Hell yeah, absolutely. man. Hell yeah. We'll go and grab a slice of pizza. We'll go and have a few beers, dude. Oh, out there. Absolutely. Yeah. So good. Yeah. The best yeah. pizza we've ever had in our lives was from Chicago. It's from a... Luminaltis also. Luminaltis. Yeah, uh, they're a pretty good place. Yeah, um, really good, man. That was the best pizza we've ever had, and I think about it every day. Um, <laughs> so, so we'll definitely be getting that when we come back. Yeah, when you guys come to Chicago, we'll uh, we'll take you guys to all the uh, cool underground spots that, like, only real Chicago folks and people in the Midwest know about. Yeah. So, like, the tourist stuff is cute, but you want to get, like, real Chicago food and, like, real Chicago like grittiness, yeah. we'll, we'll take you guys to the places where you actually have, like, real fun. Man, I am, I'm excited now. And speaking yeah. of Chicago in general, though, I mean, do you think, like, having Chicago Land Wrestling in Chicago benefits the company? Like, is, And it has such a great wrestling scene in Chicago. Uh, do you feel like it's um, helped, you know, from the start, having that rabid wrestling scene straight away? You know, like, some, some states have to build up that wrestling scene. In Chicago, it's already there, so... How did that help? Uh, it does help a lot. Um, you know, with Chicago land, what a lot of people uh, don't know, the city of Chicago, or they call it Chicago land, it, it goes from one side of the city all the way to northwest Indiana. 
-hmm. So it's almost like connecting into two states. So we run Northwest Indiana and the Chicago uh, city itself too. Right. So we have two states that we kind of run in. And uh, our last show, our debut show for studio wrestling, um, we had fans from eight different states actually come to our show. So it wasn't just Chicago wrestling fans. Wow. We had uh, fans from Michigan, uh, Missouri, Wisconsin. Uh, we had uh, one fan drove all the way from Florida to uh, come up and watch us. That's so, quite a trip from Florida, right? That's about a yeah. 10 hour drive. <laughs> yeah, easily. And so, uh, you know, we, we, we got that. And then we have um, a group of fans from Germany uh, that are wanting to come here to watch our show. Uh, we have all of you guys from the UK that are big supporters. And so I, I look at that as like, just come on down. Let's have a good time. You know, uh, One big yeah, rest it, is that something you'd like to do as well? And obviously expand and, and tour the U S yeah. Uh, a lot of the guys that we work with, uh, a lot of our wrestlers, believe it or not, aren't just Chicago wrestlers. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of wrestlers from like the Midwest. Uh, we have some guys from the South that are coming up. So we're going to have a diverse roster that's, uh, they do travel a lot. And I've been kind of lucky. The, the guys are dedicated to our brand. They kind of carry our brands to the other places to go to. So people are starting to get to know us more and more. And it's so strange when I go on Instagram sometimes and I'll get these messages from people I, I don't even know. Um, I had one just yesterday uh, from a very well-known comic book writer mm. uh, here in our, our region. And he was like, huge fan of your guys' work. And I'm just like, <laughs> and you write for army of darkness like how yeah. how cool is this you know like it's just a real feeling right i imagine yeah man i'm like cool <laughs> it shows you're doing something good though man. it shows you're doing something good that people are taking notice of and you should be proud of how you you've in such a short period of time you've made something which people are talking about and not just in chicago but over here in the uk in japan like you mentioned uh, that must be such a good feeling, knowing that people are, are watching what you're doing. Yeah, it's it's super humbling. It really is. Um, with UK, uh, we've been kind of lucky. The guys from Powered for uh, yeah. TV have been yeah. such a huge supporters of us, and you know we've we've grown a UK fan base to the point. Once you guys are fully open in the United Kingdom, uh, myself and some of the wrestlers are actually wanting to take a trip to the UK just to uh, work a couple shows, but. Get to know our fans and, and get to hang out yeah. with everybody here and, and just, you know, I mean, I love it. I've always loved Britain and I've always loved the British people. So, do you, you want know, to swap? Always... Like, yeah, if maybe. you want to come yeah. to Chicago, <laughs> you come to the UK. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, it works both ways. When you come over to the UK, you let us know and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll hit some pubs up and stuff, dude. We'll have a few pints. We'll, uh, we'll rock and roll. But I yeah. mentioned obviously Powered 4 TV. We, we have a couple of friends who work there. Um, how important have they been for you to get eyes on the product from over here? Yeah, absolutely they do. Uh, John Scott, uh, Johners, you know, Richard Crowhurst, those guys are phenomenal, the guys to work with. So, mm. you know, and uh, I mean, even their staff and, and people who do uh, some of their podcasting too, over there, they're, they're always class yeah. acts. Like I've never had any issues with no one over there. They're just mm. easy people to work with, you know? Yeah. And obviously speaking, obviously – U.S. as well, obviously, you're on high spots. Um, how important have high spots been for you as well? Really good. Uh, you know, when I reached out to them about being on their network, it was probably the easiest turnaround I've ever seen of a company. Because they were like, yes, we'd like to have you part of this. Here's our our information we need you to do. And, and literally within, I think it was like 24 hours, me and my wife had our show on their network. It was just wow. that quick. Yeah. I, mean, I love the guys from High quick. Spots. Yeah. Big shout um, out to Seth from High Spots, by the way. He's, yeah. he's the guy that helped us get on there. He's a super I, good guy, you know? It's such a um, well known network as well. I mean, everybody knows High Spots. Uh, whether yeah. it's somewhere you've bought a wrestling ring from, your first wrestling attire, or watched your first independent show, High Spots is like that constant in independent wrestling. They've done so much good. So it must be awesome being on that network because. Like IWTV, there's a huge fan base ready there. Ready, yeah. They're already wrestling fans. We always say, like, you can put your stuff on YouTube, but you can't guarantee everybody watching is a wrestling fan. Whereas on High Spots and IWTV, everybody watching is a wrestling fan, and you can make them, like, they might end up buying a ticket to a future show. You know, it's such a good uh, platform to be on. 
yeah, being on their platform has been amazing. Uh, we're also with, of course, Amazon Prime. Uh, the people can watch us on their on their network. Um, Fight TV, of course, yep. which yeah. has aired in 130 countries. So it's it's just amazing how when I first broke into business back in 2001, you know, the internet was still kind of kind of a newish thing to wrestling you know yeah and i remember uh a good friend of mine larry when i broke in uh he told me he's like you know i think one day this internet thing is going to either overexpose wrestling or we'll have so much exposure to fans that you're going to gain a fan following off the computer yeah man, and people absolutely. laughed at him people laughed yeah. at him when they when they first heard like oh whatever I, and now I was like, dude, you know, dude, he was I, completely correct, 110%. I used to go on this, uh, this forum called WWE Club when I was about 13, 12, 13. Uh, at the time, I thought it was the greatest thing ever because I was finding out about all the backstage stuff I had no idea about. Yeah. And as the years went on, I was like, this isn't as cool as I thought it was, man. Like, I didn't want to know about everything, but I was already in too deep, you know. I was yeah. trying to forget about all this stuff that I knew. If I could go back and say to myself when I was 13 years old, get off the forums, you know, don't do it. I, your friend's absolutely right. It did overexpose uh, to the business. But I guess at the same time, it's done so much good for the business as well with the streaming platforms. Um, it's, I guess, it's kind of worth the sacrifice a little bit. But um, did, did you ever go on these wrestling forums when you were younger? Yeah, I, I was, I, I was, yeah, I was on every one of them pretty much. Such I was, a toxic I was, place, man. I was in a, I was in the original, okay, so growing up, get kind of age myself on this one. So I grew up watching like old school NWA, uh, Memphis wrestling, but when uh, Extreme Championship Wrestling came around, um, growing up in South Florida, they would come to like the Fort Lauderdale War Memorial, which is sadly no longer around. Yeah. I used to go to those shows as a young kid. So I was like already getting exposed to like the smart mark type of crowd as a kid growing yeah. up, but also seeing wrestling being like in different styles. So I was like, wow, what is this? You know? And then, you know, here all you're like, Oh yeah, man, so-and-so's, you know, ahead of the forum here. And this yeah. guy's on this club ECW and all oh, this guy's on this and that call the one 900 hotline. Something kids will never know nowadays. Go yeah. one 900. We'll give you the dirt sheets. What's going on. And you're like, start dialing the phone as quick as you can to find out getting the bill for like $40, you know, <laughs> and your parents were like, <laughs> what were you doing? <laughs> you know, like, sorry. <laughs> you know, I had to know who won last night, you know? And Yeah. I mean, it was a different world. So, yeah, I was one of those kids who was stuck on forums, calling the 1-900 numbers. Oh, man. You know, geez. My dad, I, I think my father wanted to strangle me. And he got that phone bill, and he was like, 1-900? He's a re I was one of those 1-900 talk dirty numbers? I'm like, no, it's wrestling. <laughs> and my dad was like, I kind of wish it was one of those talk dirty numbers. I was going to say, I don't know which one's worse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, God. Your dad's disappointed with you. It's like, oh, why did you have to call the wrestling hotlines? Why couldn't it be a dirty number? Oh. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I, I, to, like you mentioned, obviously, yeah, watching the territories and stuff, the NWA, Memphis, uh, things like that. Are they a big influence on Chicago land then with the studio itself? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, was always a fan of characters. Was always a fan of uh, villains being villains, you know. A lot of guys nowadays in wrestling, uh, you know, it's almost kind of hard to say there's there's not a whole lot of true villains left. Yeah. Because so many guys today are like, yeah, I'm a bad guy, but watch me do this, you know, 630 splash. Yeah. And it's like, you're doing something really ultra cool, man. People ain't going to boo you. They're going to be cheering for you. So with Chicago Land, if you kind of notice, our hills really are hills. Like yeah. they do everything in the world to cheat. They do everything they can to piss off the crowd. And the baby faces are guys who are, you know, bigger than life, fight back, do all the right things as much as possible. Yeah, it, it's it's a good formula of old school wrestling, but we try to modernize it as well, too, because we do know, you know, the modern fan out there today, they appreciate some old school wrestling, but they want to see also some high flying, some some MMA style work. Yeah. So we try to get a little bit of that, too, in Chicagoland. We try to do. The best way I can describe the show, if you're a fan of like world class championship wrestling, uh, Memphis, some ECW, like the good part of ECW, yeah, um, that wasn't oversaturated with violence, but like really good storytelling. Um, we try to do cinematic film style mm -hmm. for our, our way we film the show, but also our promos. Like it's like you're watching a movie, 
So our cameraman, Xavier Camacho, um, who deserves major credit for how the show looks to the fans. I when first time I saw his camera work, I was like, man, you were doing things different. And he's like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, how about we, when we film our show, we do it in a cinematic style that if I'm a viewer at home, I feel like I'm actually in the ring, like being part of this match. Mm. And so that's our approach with it. Like you watch the matchups when, like, for example, there's a part where Damian Saint, the referee, he's going for the three count and the camera is painting right behind him. And so yeah. you're literally right behind the referee while yeah. he's, he's making the count and you're like, Oh my God, it's, First time I ever saw it, I took myself away from being the promoter and producer and put myself in a role as, as a fan. And I was just like, this is fantastic. I was like, this is old school wrestling, but it's done in such a modern way that it's yeah. for a fan who's like, ah, I don't like to watch the 80s wrestling. Okay, you may not watch the 80s wrestling, but watch what we do. Is the 80s wrestling turn into a modern day production? Yeah, yeah. it's contemporary uh, studio wrestling, which yeah. is which is awesome. I, I There's always going to be a market for studio wrestling that the, what made NWA power so good is we said for so long that power was the true alternative in wrestling because it was actually doing something different to AEW yeah. NXT it was you know it AEW is an alternative to WWE but a lot of things they do are similar whereas power was truly an alternative in every way that's what you guys are doing too you're doing something that is really an alternative different outside of the box product if you yeah. watch it, you're not going to be watching something that's so similar to Dynamite or NXT. No. You can fully watch a new product and experience new wrestlers. So I think that's what you guys are doing awesome. That's what got our attention when we first found out about it was, yeah, this is different. And, you know, that, I, I think that's what a lot of people are drawn to. With with us and everything we do, too, have you kind of noticed the, uh, the lighting for the mm. show? Yeah. You know, a lot of wrestling companies want to have, like, all the glitz and glamour, flashy, you know, laser shows and stuff. Don't me wrong. My uh, original promotion I ran back home uh, years ago, we had all that. Yeah. But when I came up here, I was like, okay, every other company has smoke machines, lights, all this. How about we turn down the lights some, put that one big light over the ring, give it the ballroom boxing 1950s film. Yes. And turns it into, like, a fight club type, type atmosphere. And when everybody's like, oh, man, no, do some laser lights here. And over there, I'm like, no, no, I said, you don't get it. That would kill the, the what we're doing. We're giving them a gritty studio show that, you know, you look at NWA Power. They did a great job. Mm. But we want to do something different from NWA. Because yeah. NWA is like, okay, that made me feel like it's 1980s. Yeah. And and that was great. Cause, and then as a kid, I mean, I would watch and I was like, oh, this is this is awesome. But I was thinking to myself, okay, there's no studio wrestling here in Chicago. I want to take a viewer who's never seen Chicago style wrestling and give them like a your studio wrestling done in a Chicago readiness mm -hmm. that gives you that vibe of violence and mayhem and you don't know what's going to happen next. And that's one of the key values learned in booking is if you keep your fans guessing what's going to happen next, you got them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so true. Uh, the, one of the reasons I, I struggle with week-to-week -week WWE right now is not only do I feel like I, I know what's going to happen the next week, it's sometimes I don't even think they know what's going to happen the next week, which makes me zone out. So, oh, like, same here. You know, same here. I'll watch it and I'll be like, well, you might just drop this storyline next week, so I'm not going to get invested. Um, and with you, with you and, like, a lot of other promotions in uh, Northern America... You're doing very good jobs of telling stories which are more compelling than a lot of mainstream TV products like WWE. So I think there's a lot of credit to be given there. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Thank you for that. Um, to me, you know, uh, I don't try to knock anyone's product, but I will say this. Uh, the Really, the only wrestling I will watch on television, I try to watch as much of it as I can just to see what people are doing. So yeah. I can do opposite <laughs> of yeah. that, you know. Uh, but uh, so like I watch NXT. I like what NXT is. Yeah. And NXT is a sports based product. Definitely NXT UK. I yeah. think you know people talk about the the North America NXT, but I think you guys in the UK are killing it, man. 
Really? Like, seriously, the British wrestling scene. Yeah, in my opinion. I'm, maybe because I'm a world of sport guy, too. I'm like, yeah. heard oh, about yes, love, love some Johnny Saint. Love, you know, uh, uh, Jim Brakes. You know, all yeah. the old school guys, too. But, um, but NXT UK has such a unique roster. And the way that they're doing the wrestling, they're doing the cups. They're doing, like, the, the round system style, yeah. which I think is awesome. I love that, you know, because it's a sport. It's a sport yeah. fill. And I think for a lot of old school wrestling fans, why WWE main roster has turned them off. I think why AEW has turned away a lot of fans too, as much as a lot of people think like AEW is this big alternative, not trying to be a hater on them by no means. But when they first came out, their whole thing was, we're going to be the alternative events. We're going to do everything that Vince doesn't do. What is the first thing you guys are going to do? Well, we'll hire every former WWE guy that he gets rid of. That's I, doing total opposite of everything. And stuff. Shaq and Cody, that just stinks yeah. of WWE. <laughs> yeah. I'm not uh, hating, it, just stating a fact. <laughs> the, bookers, the bookers put the belts on themselves. You know, yeah. ooh, you know I mean, it, it's just, they, they, and, you know, they go and they do the comedy skits. And there's nothing, good, there's nothing wrong with good comedy wrestling. There's a difference from good comedy and bad comedy. Yeah, agreed. And, and some of the stuff that AEW has done, I'm just like, God, it's so cringy. Like, I, I don't even want to watch this. And But then I turn on AEW Dark, mm -hmm. and they have a lot of the independent talent that are trying to bring up. Then I'll watch that because, you know, there's always the, the kids that you work with. Uh, yeah. I know uh, there's this uh, guy actually on my Facebook page I'm actually good friends with. Uh, you know, he's friends with a lot of my kids. Uh, his name is J.J. Garrett. Mm -hmm. uh, J.J. Garrett just did a uh, match with QT Marshall on uh AEW dark and it was a fantastic match and I'm, i look at that and go okay if you have that style of wrestling that should be on your main roster mm, that's yeah. good it's sports based a fan who wants to see wrestling treated as wrestling will watch that yeah. and to me that's the problem with so much of these guys they want to you know they want to appeal to a small niche market of crowds and forget that most wrestling fans in general if they're not smart wrestling fans they're the fans who want to come to a show. A lot of times it's either working class folks who has their family with them. They pay the hard earned ticket to watch something. They want to be entertained. They want to feel like they're part of the show, but they also want to see a fight and they want to see yeah. a fight between uh, a horrible villain and a bigger than life baby face that is trying to fight for the right. They want to go home them. feeling happy that they saw yes. the bad guy get knocked out. Yes. Yes. I remember as a kid, um, going to shows at a very young age uh, when the villains or the Hills, I should say, you know, when they would, they would always kind of find a way to win by the skin of their teeth. Yeah. And they, they would set up the show like next month, so-and-so over so-and-so inside the steel cage. Ah, oh, fans would go crazy. Yeah. I always came home going, yeah, finally, you know, he's going to get his hands on him and beat him senseless. You know, and as a kid, it's like, wow. And I look back as an adult, it's like, wow, that's the emotions that we used to have as fans. That's what we should be giving back to our fan base. Yeah. Make them agree. want to pay a ticket to go see the guy get his teeth knocked out, you know? Yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, absolutely. That's well, yeah, I agree. That's why, yeah, I agree. That's why we're fans. I totally, yeah. yeah. I agree. I, I'm, a, I'm like you. I'm a, I'm a big old school fan. I love watching all the old territory stuff on the network and stuff. And That's why I'm a big fan of what you guys are doing. You know, I love the... I love what you said, the dark arena. I miss... I miss those days when you had the dark, smoke-filled arenas and things like that, you know. Yeah. I was watching WrestleMania 1 the other day, and I was just like, I kind of wish it was kind of like that still. Maybe that's yeah. just the old school in me, but that, that's it, man. That's why I like to, I love what you guys are doing. Um, but you mentioned the UK scene as well. I mean, would you ever look at collaborating with UK promotions and coming over, doing sort of like, you know, work with no, some of them? Absolutely. We'd love to. You know, um, we kind of have a uh, kind of a bond with a small company, uh, called DNA Pro. Oh, oh yeah. yes, no, DNA. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm friends with uh, the promoter. Uh, wonderful guy, class act all the way through. Yeah. Um, you know, they're we're we're kind of hoping to do something with them, but you know, we're also open to work with other UK promotions too. Yeah. To hey, to have cool. talent come here to the states, but also bring talent over there too, and and do a collaboration. I would love that. I'm all about collaborations too. We could that's, have that's, uh, that's wrestling. That's with podcasts. That's with uh, merchandise apparel companies. You know. The only way we can help each other grow in this world is by networking together and helping each yeah. other out. Absolutely. We could Absolutely. have a, a series, um, you know, like a Chicago versus London, 
a Chicago Land versus London Town series where we, you know, the best that London has to offer versus the best of Chicago. Oh, I'd love to see something like that in the future, man. That'd be sick. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'd like to mention the DNA though, because I'm a big fan of DNA. I've got, uh, I've actually, had I known that, I've got some of the t-shirts in my drawer and worn it tonight. But um, yeah, one of our friends, Jess, she works for DNA, and so we're big <laughs> fans of them. Um, yeah, dude, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see you guys over here, like Callum said, you know, Chicago versus London, Chicago versus Manchester, you know, things like that. It'd be uh, like you said, you know, everyone works together. It's better for the wrestling business. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I know Jess as well too. Jess is a wonderful girl. You know, yes. talented, yeah, talented lady, all the way through. Sweet, sweetest soda pop man. She's the nicest person. Right. Um, really happy to see how she's having her success with podcasting too, and what she's yeah. been doing for all these companies. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to do that. And to me, like, for I know, like, as a kid growing up, when I would go to ECW shows, and I remember when they would bring in talent from Mexico and some mm-hmm. of the Japanese talent, we got to see them. It was such a special treat because it's like you're not going to see this every single day here in the United States like this. So it's like set back and, and enjoy what you're going to be, you know, watching. And, um, our fans, uh, definitely with the Chicago show that we just did, um, they're extremely rowdy. So they, they do, uh, they were loud from the first match all the way up to the end. Like they were not quiet for nothing. They were like ultra loud. Yeah. And it kind of reminded me a lot of the UK crowds where, yeah. you know, you'd hear the singing and the chants and people yeah. are drinking and having a good time. And, you know, and, and I told the guys, I was like, this crowd here gets you guys prepared to go to go to England. And they're like, oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, the British wrestling fans, definitely modern British wrestling fans yeah. are not silent <laughs> you know, <laughs> at all. You know, I remember watching the world of sports shows and like everyone's wearing suits and ties and they're like, yeah. oh, God. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Very good for Slock, you know? Yeah. And, and, and then you watch today's crowd, and, you know, there's you got all these soccer chants going They're on. Rowdy. Yeah. Yeah. I love that, man. I do. Oh, man. I do. I miss it so much. I, yeah, I can't wait to get the shows back, to get fans back, you know? But tell everybody that we have on. I mean, we've not had a show since March last year. And it's it's, crazy. we're chomping at the bit, man. Chomping at the bit. Um, I've got one question before we start to wrap up, John. I want to know, you mentioned World the Sport, you mentioned the, the greats like Johnny Sin, Jim Briggs. If you could bring in anybody from that World of Sport era into Chicago Land Wrestling for a one-off match in their prime, who would it be? Probably Billy Robinson. Yeah? Oh, yes, great choice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to me, to me, like, Billy... Is is the epitome of British wrestling? Yeah, you know when I think of what a British wrestler was all about, he's absolutely tr- you know natural strongman, uh, snake pit Wiggins, you know style training, his mission expert. Mm-hmm. You know the guy trained Sakuraba for love of God. I mean, but you also look at all the guys that Billy Robson trained from England, like yeah. you know Marty Jones. You know yeah. came from Billy. You know and and Johnny Saint. You know went from Billy. You know and then look at. It's like that, that um, as we just call it, like the gunfighter uh, story. You know, this gunfighter is so great, but he trained this gunfighter to do this. Yeah. And then this guy learned from him. It's like the lineage of Billy Robinson is like, he's, he taught all these guys and all these guys are teaching all these guys. Now you got guys like Zach uh, Zaber Jr. Zach, you know, Zach Saber Jr. is doing all the, the great British technical wrestling stuff. Yeah. And literally, you know, his lineage goes all hey, the way back yeah, to these guys. Zach learned from Johnny Sid and Mike Jones. Mighty Jones line from Billy Robinson, you know, it's it's that lineage has been passed on and created some incredible talents. But yeah, I, I just thought that'd be interesting to find out because that would be that would be something to see, you know, it in his prime I, versus some of today's talents. Wow, that'd be that'd be crazy. That's only an interesting thing. One of the guys on our roster, uh, Mega Chris Jones, uh, mm-hmm. is actually a Billy Robinson student. Right. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. And you guys will be seeing him. Uh, he'll be debuting uh, for our company in August, and he literally does all the uh, the technical wrestling holds. He knows like uh, I watched him one time uh, wrestle this one guy, and uh, he told the guy he's like, "Yeah, you stand in the ring, and uh, I'll guide you through everything I'm doing." And literally put on like a 30 minute match without throwing one move, like one kick, whatever. And the whole crowd was spellbind by watching this. They're like my God, like he's getting out all these holes, these reversals, like he had all these like little tricks he was doing a lot of, a little bit of Johnny Saint stuff, but yeah, you tell a lot of Billy Robinson type stuff too. And it was just fantastic. 
Yeah, so we'll dream, match, like dream match against Zack Sabre Jr. Then I mean that's you know make it happen, man. Yeah, man. I mean that's why I look at Chris Jones like. You know, I may not have Zach on the on Zach Saber Jr. on the roster, but you know, I got Chris Jones. That's pretty darn good. So that's yeah. amazing, man. Um, yeah. yeah, before before we wrap it up as well, dude. Obviously, we'd love to get you back home because we'd love to keep doing this and bringing you back. And you know, when you've got shows as well, we can talk about the shows, previews, reviews. Yeah. And you know, like I said, we we want to work with you guys and want to stay in touch. Yeah, you know, kind of give a little plug right now. Uh, June twelfth is our next taping. That mm-hmm. we're doing so June 12th and August 21st mm-hmm. is our two summer shows that we're hoping, fingers crossed, yeah, that uh, we could actually have crowds again and and hopefully COVID will finally well fade off and we don't have to hear about it no more. I, I hope I know it's gonna be a while, but you know, a boy could have his dreams, right? Uh, but yeah, definitely check us out on uh Instagram, uh, Twitter, of course, the Chicago and Res, us on Facebook. Um, also, anybody wants to send me a friend request, any of you guys do. I'm on Facebook a lot too. Um, I'm always down to earth guy, willing to chat with anybody. Uh, but yeah, we got those going on. Uh, check out ChicagolandWrestling.com. That's our website. Yeah. And uh, pretty soon we'll be working with the guys at Wrestling Travel to uh, have packages for uh, the fans in the UK to go out and have a good time. Well, we'll uh, no dude, doubt see you there. You'll yep. see us. You'll see us at some point, dude. As soon as we can get over there, we're going to be there. Believe me. Um. But one last thing as well, I mean, that t-shirt you're wearing is all, is awesome. So, I mean, plug the merch as well, man. Where can we find the merch? Actually, believe it or not, uh, you just actually just message me, and I actually have all of our shirts in our own little personal warehouse. Um, you know, people, of course, can order from ProWrestlingTees.com. Yeah. Uh, we have our shirts there, and I also have what a maneuver. But with me personally, when I get the chance to send merchandise or even I send tickets, I actually write a personal letter to every one yeah. of our fans who buy stuff. And, and I'll send in, like, extra things like stickers, you know, mm. uh, bumper stickers, different stuff. This is a little extra things, it ju- just as a thank you to the fans for supporting us, you know? I think we might have to get one then, Jamie. I, I'm yeah. ordering through, yeah. through you, dude. I, yeah, I'm ordering through you. You had me at stickers. Yeah. I love stickers. My laptop's oh, covered in stickers, so I'll, get, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, because that, that T-shirt's badass, dude. So, I mean, yeah, I think uh, you'll be hearing from me in a few days um, when I've got some cash. Um, because I love that T-shirt. But like I said, dude, when we're over there, you're gonna see us, man. Because Chicago is our favorite place in the world, anyway. So you're gonna see us. Yeah, well, I mean, we'd love to have you guys there, and uh, you know, we'll definitely. Uh, even if we don't, like I said, we don't have a show going on, you just let us know, and uh, me and some of the guys from the roster will come out and show you guys around, and have a good time. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. But it's been a pleasure, dude. Uh, John Bolla, Chicago Land Championship Wrestling. Thank you very much, man. Oh, thank you for having me on the show, guys. Appreciate it. Great, great call. I mean, really, yeah, bleh, yeah, tongue tied. Great conversation as always, and uh, you know, really, really glad to be working with you guys on some upcoming projects. Thank you so much, man.